Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Enter the Ether, the podcast all about the upcoming third-person MOBA ethereal clash of souls. I'm your host, the Mangoose, and if you enjoy pink sweatshirts and Pidgeotto haircuts, then have I got the man for you. It's Jelly Knees. How you doing, Jelly? I guess better now that I have that intro, that I'm a Pidgeotto haircut wearing, or pink sweater wearing Pidgeotto. Um, I'm doing great, Mangoose. <laughs> How are you doing? I'm doing well because we have Dan, the man, Daniel Hodge, the voice actor that has been doing the uh, the amazing Myth Spotlights. Um. Cold, sharp, and focused, the beasts of Grin aren't the only things tyrants must fear because this huntress is known as Malaya, the remorseless. I'm with us today to talk to us all about voice acting. How you doing, Dan? I'm doing good. Thank you guys for having me on. God, it's our pleasure. Yeah, absolutely. So you're, you're just normal voice. We were talking before we started recording. You're just normal voice is awesome. Like, <laughs> Well, thank you. I, uh, <laughs> I had to work on it for nine years to get it to this point because before I sounded a lot more high-pitched and nasally. Yeah. So you oh, sound so a lot like so me. I get it. It's I was, cool. I was yeah. going <laughs> to say, like me. <laughs> I didn't know One that was something I that... could improve upon. <laughs> Over time, if you actually use your voice on a day-to-day -day basis... You start to realize it starts to open up and you can now have a more accessible range, which, I mean, you guys talk all the time on your show. So you've probably noticed maybe even your voice has changed over time from just using it every day. I do get a little bit more of an announcer -y voice, whatever I'm doing these, I guess. I'm not sure Mangoose wants me to talk any more than I already do. So I wouldn't maybe I'll... Talk more I'll always interrupt you and talk over you and then I feel bad. <laughs> then I cry. It's all good. Somebody has to. So this week, we're going to talk about the Malaya spotlight that was revealed, of course. And then after that, we're going to talk to Dan about voice acting. And then we got just a whole list of questions for him. And we'll get into that. But first, let's start off with this myth spotlight. Um, Jelly, you and I have already done our videos talking about what we thought of everything. Uh, Dan, what did you think of the myth spotlight? I was really surprised by it because after I saw it, it almost sounded different from how I recorded it because it sounded way more cut together really well, edited really well. And when I was doing it before, you know, you make mistakes, you stumble sometimes while you're kind of going through the flow of getting it recorded. And then after hearing it all, I was like, wow, did I really make it sound that good? It sounds a lot <laughs> better than I remember it sounding. So I was actually really impressed by it. I was like, wow, man, that sounds good. So I was really happy to see how it all turned out. And I was really excited to see the new footage of the map and everything that was going to be shown because i only get to see that stuff pretty much as often as you guys do yeah they just tell you what they need said and you say it you don't get yeah, to I, look at I everything get a huh? text document with some words <laughs> and i get direction <laughs> and then i get to find out like everybody else what it looks like and what kind of new you know what the size comparison between the characters um the different types of animations and abilities and how they look so reading it all it all sounds really cool but then i also want to see how it all turns out right I, the the whole spotlight I thought was really good. The, the Dante one was done really well. I think this one was an improvement over the Dante spotlight. Uh, they had a little bit more footage of Malaya running through the map than they did with Dante. And uh, she her 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 model looks incredible. She was the first one I think to get the rework to the upgraded models. So I think they'll probably improve over time. But with Malaya as a base, like how can you get like how can you get better than that? She's she looks so good. The only the only thing is her hands, like, like when she holds her hands up, like her hand is twice the size of her head. Like she has huge hands. She could, she could slap a Kim Kardashian on the ass and hit both cheeks with one swipe. <laughs> <laughs> I like it because it, it is a characteristic that automatically makes her stand out when you see her. Mm -hmm. The first thing you yeah. see is those giant claw-like hands and you can immediately identify it's Malaya. So. Right. Yeah. You just see a shadow over and know who it is. Yeah. yeah I, Jelly, what are your thoughts? I completely agree with you, Mangoose, that I think this was a improvement over the Dante spotlight and in just how it was presented and the shots that we got, we got Easter eggs involved at the same time between seeing like jungle minions and Atropos in the Atropos cave. There was a lot of little details that were included that didn't have to be, but just add to the overall experience of viewing that spotlight. And this time, you know, we didn't think it was a it was Dante's voice actor recording the lines because, you know, we knew that this was all happening this time. 
Yeah, that was something I was surprised about too. And I was like, wait, I, I heard people commenting about that. And then after I saw the video again, looked back at the voice lines, I was like, oh, I guess it does sound like <laughs> Yeah, a little bit, a little bit. <laughs> That's a compliment. I mean, I like Dante's yeah, voice lines. So thinking you were the same thing, 100% a compliment. <laughs> What thing people have been... I saw other videos thinking the same thing. People said the exact same uh, thing. That <laughs> oh, <you> really? <laughs> thinking that it was Dante talking. <laughs> Wouldn't that be a wild idea if they had like Didi, the voice actress for Malaya, like do the, <laughs> the voiceover <laughs> for her? Like they had each one do their own voiceover. That'd I be mean, that'd be pretty wild. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to put you out of a job, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> We've. You're you're going to become iconic. Like I can see it right now. Like your voice in these is is going to be so tied to Ethereal for going forward. Mm -hmm. well, I hope so. I mean, uh, Ethereal is really cool looking MOBA, and I really love the design and the uniqueness of, of it over all the different ones that I've seen come out. So that was one of the things I wanted to bring when I was doing the voice recording was trying to sound unique and make it sound different from all those other type of spotlights you normally see so hopefully it does it <laughs> and does i can indeed. say like at least for me personally right i've been a league player for a long time when i watch the league spotlights and i hear the voice that's talking i'm like oh that's this person like i recognize them and it kind of gives this tie to the spotlight even if i don't care about the character just the voice itself is a big tie so i think having you be the voice and and being able to talk to you and all of those things creates that same kind of connection to it all, which I love. I think that's a great thing. Thank you. One thing I will say about the spotlight, something that a lot of people have been pointing out is that uh, Malaya's kit is similar to other kits in like uh, Smite, League of Legends or whatever. That's going to happen. <laughs> like Everything can't be completely original. Um, and I imagine as the game progresses, they'll probably come up with more original ideas, but especially for these starting heroes, you're going to want something that you're kind of comfortable with. So you're not just coming into this new game picking up a new hero and having no idea how to play them whatsoever at least with this where the the kits mirror some stuff that you're already kind of used to i think that's that's a, a bit of the goal uh i was talking to kai about that a little bit he said he's not too put off by people um comparing malaya to i think it's kali in smite or something like that oh, yeah that's that's smite. the name i've heard thrown around a lot in comparison yeah. so because it, if somebody familiar from Warwick? Warwick. Yep. Warwick's come up too, yeah. That's League of Legends, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You can tell yeah. how much I play Smite in League of Legends. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I think that's absolutely right, Mangus. At least these initial myths, whether it be just the pre Alpha 7 or the first 14 that we know about, being something similar to other feeling games, right? Helps you connect to the character more initially that you can be like, oh, I like playing Kali from Smite. So I'll probably enjoy playing Malaya. Um, or it helps you just pick up the character and be more comfortable with the game and move forward into the more complex ones that get released down the line. Right. Exactly. Well put. Yeah, it's really important that you have uh, a game that is user friendly in the beginning so that you create that player base that wants to keep coming back to it and doesn't get frustrated by over complexity. Mm -hmm. And then after a time, once they've gotten used to how the base ones work and you introduce new ones and you go back and you rework the old ones, you add more uniqueness to them to separate them from all the other ones that come out. You follow that kind of process of the evolution of the game to building the player base up to refining and executing it so that everybody wants to keep playing that's been there since the beginning because it keeps refreshing itself. It becomes more interesting again. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think... Something that has been really good as a reference is League of Legends. Being around for 10 years and being able to keep players like me who've been around from the beginning still engaged in the game and still excited for new things and changes because they, they did that exact concept, Dan, is just refreshing things and keeping it feeling new even for people that have been around but also for new players at the same time. I think uh, that's about all I had to say about myths, the myth spotlight for Malaya. Do you guys have any final thoughts on that? Go watch it if you haven't. Nope. Yeah, definitely <laughs> yeah. watch it. And then I'll watch Mangoose and my breakdowns of it. <laughs> <laughs> Probably Jelly's breakdowns. Mine tend to be more funny than actually informative. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
Uh, okay, so let's get into talking to Daniel Hodge about um, just voice acting in general. First question, right off the bat: Are you a gamer? Do you play? Do you play a lot of games? I do play a lot of games. Um, of the games that I play, I'm normally kind of about uh, RPGs and tactical kind of strategy games. So when it comes to that, I tend to spend a lot of my time kind of just learning the mechanics of a game, diving into it, learning about the lore of the world, and kind of immersing myself in it as much as possible. So I play games uh, like back in the day, like Command and Conquer. Uh, I, of course, play Skyrim, the Dragon Age games, any kind of those games that has the really super high kind of world where everything, you can just dive into it and read about it and get into it. Um, and I love my games to be kind of group focused. So if it's a co-op or multiplayer game that I can play with cooperatively with my friends, that for me is so much more fun because I love to play a game where I can fight alongside people that I know and um, compete with them against other people and kind of refine that kind of team energy with them. And MOBAs was one of the things that I liked just recently after Paragon came out because I was so interested in uh, League of Legends and Dota and Smite, but the controls were never really that friendly to me because I grew up playing console games. So mm -hmm. when it came for me, I had the chance to play something like a Paragon game. I got so immersed in that because it all clicked for me and I finally understood what MOBAs were. And it was exactly that type of game experience that I wanted that I always looked for in games. So it was something I really easily fell into and became obsessed with because I like the design of how a MOBA works so much. Jelly, anything? I, I mean, I think that that's the perfect explanation for what Paragon was to a lot of people. And, right, and, yeah. and yeah, the is. MOBA, and it's it's part in the MOBA space, right? That you play League of Legends, Dota, and Smite, and it just didn't quite click. But then Paragon was the one that, that, that it kind of brought everything together. It worked out. And I think this is a progression of that for a lot of people, which is exciting. We've talked about in the past. It's exciting for us to be a part of that. But I think that that's great to hear from even the voice actors that are voicing for this project that they have that similar feeling yeah it's really nice to see like i, I feel that you're one of us now like <laughs> one of us that that, that one kind of, kind of us of deep, one of us paragon a little bit and now mm -hmm. you, you you've transitioned into the ethereal scene so that's really yeah. cool to hear <laughs> what's our next question jelly so how did you start in voice acting? Like, did you do any other performance arts, musical theater or anything like that? Or did it, was it just voice acting for you all the way through? Well, I, I never received any proper training. I was always interested in trying out for stage or theater back in high school. But in my school, those were the weird kids. It was kind of the thing where <laughs> the band geeks were the popular guys. They were the ones strutting around their stuff and they were really popular. Band was a really big deal in my school and uh, it got a lot of attention for a school. A lot of people went to, you know, go into professional scenes from our school. So when it came to acting in theater, we didn't have much of a budget. It was one small room kind of at the back of one of our gymnasiums. And the people who did go and try out there were kind of both the theater group and the choir group. They did kind of two things at once. So I was really excited to try out for it, but I kind of got, um, really really nervous about judgment because i didn't i didn't look like you know any sort of uh <laughs> i didn't look like any sort of tv star or anything like that back then <laughs> as a kid and i was worried both about my physical appearance and my social awkwardness i was very shy i didn't normally like to speak in front of people and when i got the opportunity to i would mostly just keep to myself and my small group of friends and i would spend a lot more time doing artwork rather than acting work even though i always wanted to try so there came a time when I moved up to North Dakota for a couple of years back in uh, 2011. I was stuck in an apartment, a one bedroom apartment in the middle of nowhere in Wapaton, North Dakota. And I saw people on YouTube making content and watching people who were making things like fan dubs for anime or dubbing over video game characters. So I got really excited because I thought this was really cool. And I started watching lots of videos. And then I saw people trying to impersonate and do impressions of existing voice actors or characters, and they weren't really hitting the mark for me. So 
I was trying to tell people in comments about it, and eventually one of them was like, oh, well, why don't you do it yourself? <laughs> so I was just kind of like, you know, they didn't take criticism very well. So I went, I bought a $20 Logitech headset, plugged it into my computer, and did, and sent it in. And I got invited to a small Facebook group back then who wanted to dub and do an, uh, anime fan dubs and stuff like that. So eventually after I did kind of do those projects, I got a lot of messages back when YouTube had a messaging system, you know, all the time where you could message each other back and forth. And people uh, started asking me to voice in their projects. And I was getting something like anywhere from three to 10 a week. Like there was a ton of people who wanted me to voice in their projects. And I had not done any of this before. I didn't know what I was doing. I was just bored and sitting in my apartment trying to find some way to kill time on my computer. So it turned out from there, I went from fan dubbing to working in machinima, uh, Halo machinima mostly, back when those were a thing. And then from that, it kind of progressed where I realized I could voice act for some kind of production on YouTube. But, you know, how many people see one YouTube video only if they find it in this math, uh, this big algorithm, you know? And then I started voicing for things like mods for Skyrim and Fallout. I wanted to find something where I could see people, lots of different people, play the stuff that I did. And luckily, one of the mods that I did was for Helgen Reborn, which was a big Skyrim mod. It came out right around the time 2013 where I was looking into getting into that. And he was apparently a big mod author. So that exploded and got like the number top three slot on the Nexus after it came out. And then I got a ton of requests again from people asking me to voice in their mods. And now, uh, you know, nine years later, I'm still doing that. And I've done over two dozen different Skyrim mods. Pretty much anybody who plays Skyrim now, whether they're a streamer or somebody, you know, who's just downloading, probably has at least one that I've been in out of all the ones that are out there. And from then, I kind of wanted to take it up another notch and go for professional acting. So then I started looking into doing things like video games, uh, I, d different video game directors that I could audition for on places like Casting Call Club. And eventually word of mouth from those people hooked me up with a whole bunch of opportunities. I ended up voicing in some films. I ended up uh, doing some professional work that hasn't come out yet, but is still out there, you know, floating around until it does get released. So kind of ever since in the past couple of years that I kind of made the switch into pursuing it more professionally. Now more and more opportunities have opened up for me and I've had uh, a lot of chance to really show what I can do. That's awesome. That's, yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> that's incredible. I feel right now that like, Years from now, I'll be like, "Yeah, I had Daniel Hodge on my show." You know, <laughs> exactly. Like, nobody exactly. will believe me. They'll be like, "Oh fuck, no, you did not. Yeah. Not not Daniel Hodge. You know, <laughs> you don't know that guy." <laughs> yeah, yeah, I do. I talked to him. You never know. It's always <laughs> cool to build found founding blocks of where you come from and everybody you connect to in this type of industry, whether it's through media or video games or writing. You know you all have an opportunity to try to, you're making friends along the way that always lead mm. back to you for opportunities for work and to take your career forward. And the more people you meet, you're kind of like in this tight knit uh, group of talented people who all have the superpower that they can create something. Somebody can write really well. Somebody can make music. Somebody is really good at editing videos. Somebody's really good at voice acting. And all of those people come together and they all use, utilize their talents to make something unique. And not always just for money, just something unique. And often that can be led to money. Just like Critical Role was a big deal when it came mm -hmm. out. There were a bunch of voice actors who weren't trying to voice act. They were just trying to play Dungeons and Dragons. And eventually it spiraled out into this big, you know, empire almost of what they were doing. This business where they could do that and not even have to voice act anymore if they didn't want to. Yeah. Right. Um, so is this, I just out of curiosity, is this one of the first interviews you've done like, as a voice actor or do you have you done other interviews talking about the work that you've done i've done maybe one once before like uh back maybe in 2014 and that was just uh for like the machinima stuff that i had done before for halo machinima and kind of catching up it was called fireside chats with a with a particular youtuber i can't remember his name right now 
but it was just a small interview where I answered some questions. But other than that, this is the only other one I've done. So now that he, when he becomes famous, he can be like, oh yeah, my first, my first like big interview was <laughs> on a podcast called Enter the Ether. He's going to bring us up with him, Mangoose. It's going to happen. Yeah, well, well, by then, Enter the Ether is going to be so big anyway. That... That's true. Everyone's going to be like, oh, Enter the Ether. Yeah, I know that. No big deal. <laughs> yeah. We all have our plans. <laughs> All right. So the next question is, did you watch like uh, spotlights? I mean, we kind of already got into this a little bit um, already, but I kind of want to know if you watched other spotlights from other games to get inspiration. It sounds like you didn't really get inspiration as much as you uh, you wanted to do something uh, different than what they what they were doing in their spotlights. Yeah. On, on the whole, I would say, no, I didn't watch them for inspiration, but being a person who played League of Legends, who played Smite, who played Paragon, I was very familiar with the spotlight concept and how it should work, what needs to be done, how it should sound, because I watched them on repeat all the time back when I was playing, and I would spend my time trying to learn as much as I could from because uh, the different types of heroes and characters that you would get to play, because I wanted to be good. I wanted to be a value to my team, and I wanted to educate myself. So... I listened and really appreciated the tone and the informative nature of all of the spotlights and how, you know, they weren't trying to slip in a bunch of little PR quirks too much or anything, or like really doll it up to say like, play this character, play this character, play this character. They're just like, this is what you need to know. This is how you should build the character. This is what they're good at. And just make it as straightforward as possible. Because if you add a little bit too much zaniness, too much quirkiness to your voice or the performance, then it could become distracting. And then at that point, people are less listening to what you say and more listening about how you say it. Mm -hmm. And then they might start to think like, oh, that's weird how he said that. Or why is he talking in this way of, you know, this this tone of voice this is kind of weird. So I just kept it bass, um, normal voice. I tried that out during the recording session um, when I put in my audition. And then I immediately got back, hey, we want you for this. It sounds great. The whole team likes it, so <laughs> go for it. So I was, all right, perfect. And uh, from that point on, just not going to change it, going to keep it the same as I've done. If they want to make any switches or any tone changes, I mean, that's up for them to decide. But as of right now, I think I like the way that I do it because it's so much easier for me to do the voice when it's so natural. Because if I tried to make it anything other than natural, then it would both be very hard for me to get done in a timely manner and to get it done professionally, it'd be a lot more taxing on my voice if I try to force it to be something it wasn't. Mm -hmm. And it could impact the informative nature and pacing of the voice for when you're trying to, you know, breathe appropriately and get all the words out when you need to. So I'm, I'm pretty happy with the way that the spotlights have turned out. I haven't needed to spend too much time analyzing how to do it because I've been doing narration like this for other projects for many, many years. And the narration on the spotlights, I, I love so much. So incredible work to you. Huge kudos because it's it captures that kind of feeling that you've mentioned with the other the other spotlights in the games, right? Of being informational, but it not being distracting, but also being someone that it, it I don't I can't put words to it in a great way. Um, but just I really enjoyed them and they feel really professional in in quality because of that narration well thank you oh just so you guys know real quick my computer completely froze during that for <laughs> a few seconds so jelly <laughs> <laughs> gonna need your recording after this sounds good <laughs> <laughs> let's want to keep that in i just had to panic for a second and realize make sure i was recording still <laughs> yeah <laughs> It's happened in the past, Dan, that something yeah. has happened and the recordings go bad. I believe it. <laughs> that, was just, that was just a few seconds, but still, I'd, re I'd prefer to have a cleaner <laughs> recording. <laughs> All right, moving on. Uh, do you do any impressions? And I know you do. The reason I came up with this question is because I was looking through your YouTube and just looking at a lot of your, the voice work you've done. The one that caught my attention the most was you did a, a Reinhardt from Overprime impression that blew me away. I love Reinhardt, and then your impression was just so spot on. Do you, is that something that you do to like practice or anything? Just doing impressions of a, like other characters? Yeah, 
And the greatest blessing about being a voice actor is your voice is with you all day long. You can practice anytime. It's not like a guitar or an instrument, you know, that is sitting there that you can't just, you need both hands to work with. It's constantly here, so you should be refining it any chance you get. I spend most of my time doing it in the car. If anybody put a microphone in my car to hear the things that I have said, I'd probably be in a mental asylum right now <laughs> instead of doing this. So because of the things that, you know, you, you have to practice things like maniacal laughter, you have to practice things like saying, you know, really menacing tones and stuff and controlling your volume, but also to eliminate voice cracks and breaking. So when you think of a line or if you think of a character and lines that you've heard, the 90% of what you need to focus on is getting that delivery right when it comes time to saying it. So you need to focus then the other 10% of the time when you're not recording is spending time trying to figure out how that line should be read, how to breathe appropriately during it, um, thinking of how the character used it, their inflections and why. So when it comes to impressions, I don't consider myself like an impressionist first. I, I like to do acting first, but it turns out that I have done impressions pretty well. So people have asked me to impersonate characters and usually it was always of all those messages I got, hey, can you impersonate this character? Hey, can you impersonate this guy? I really need this for my project. I want somebody who sounds like him. Or very often when you're just trying to do a character voice, they give you a lot of the times character voice example and they link you to an existing actor's work from like Apex Legends or something like that and be like, hey, look, can you do this voice? I really want this voice but for this character with these lines. And so then you try to make it sound close to what they want um, and not go too far to the point that you're just copying. It's a direct rip off of the character because right. you are your own voice. No matter how close you get to something, you're only really auditorially uh, kind of tricking people that your voice sounds exactly identical to that character. Because if you really listen, or at least when I really listen to my own voice, I can immediately tell from hearing the two recordings, what separates that original actor from myself and just where I can hit. There's this bar of where you have to hit in your impersonation. And you can only really ever hit here because the shape and nature of their vocal cords is completely unique. It's completely their own. And you may be able to get close, but what is super easy for somebody else to do because of the way their voice works is they brought their natural quality to it can be really painful and excruciating to do for somebody else. And when somebody gives you a long script of all these different lines that they want you to do as that character voice, and they expect it to, oh yeah, I should get it like, you know, next week. It's like, <laughs> it is extremely painful because they don't always realize that to completely take on somebody else's vocal performance to sound correct to the human ear, you're often forcing your voice to behave unnaturally and can even damage it to the mm -hmm. point that it's not even worth it to try to do that much work for something when they could have just hired the original actor. Um, I would be straight now, up insulted too. Yeah, I mean, there are actors like that who don't like being impersonated. And I always try to message the actor first and let them know, hey, I'm doing this, if they even respond to me. I hope you're not offended by that because you become competition in the professional industry, when you take somebody else's voice and their personality and you start taking on work for them, that's work they could have gotten. And there's right. only so much food for the fish in the sea. Mm -hmm. So at that point, I try to be respectful to the source material anytime I do an impression. If it's just something I do for fun that I post on my channel, I'm not making money up. I, I don't monetize that stuff because it is impersonating somebody else's performance and I spend my time doing it kind of as a practice or a, a fun kind of thing that I can do to work on my voice and try to figure out how far I can push it sometimes. So yeah, the stuff like the Overwatch ones, I literally picked up my phone, went to the bathroom in that video and started recording myself doing as many different lines as I could think of because I was playing the game at the time in the living room and I was really enjoying it. So I wanted to just go off of all of that. That was the first time you see right there of me attempting any of those voices. And I just posted it up because, hey, look, guys, I made this thing, you know, wasn't trying to like make it this big production or like, look, I am this character. It was just like, yeah, I'm just doing an impression. But I appreciate that you liked it so much. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, the that's the way I viewed it as, too. I was like, it's just it looked like you were just having fun mm -hmm. and just tr 
trying to like exercise your range a little bit. I didn't think of it as you were trying to like take the Reinhardt's voice no. actor's job or anything like that. But oh man, yeah, I would be straight up if somebody was like, "Hey, can you do this character's voice?" I would be insulted. Like, let me come up with something for the character, <laughs> right? Like, if if you had to be a video, like, "Hey, can you edit this exactly like this other YouTuber?" And it's their video. I'd be like, um, can you go fuck yourself? Because I'm not doing that. I'm going to do it the yeah. way I want to do it. Yeah. <laughs> it's a slowly really, slow. <laughs> if we had a, a, a microphone in your car, what would we hear? <laughs> on a daily basis? <laughs> See, I knew Mangus was, was going to call me out on that because I so, and I was going to mention. So I'm a singer, right? I've been in oh. singing for a long time. And so hearing you say a lot of the same things that I do as a singer professionally right like the practicing in your car if people if people were listening right you 100 percent. i get that 100 percent. and just the different things you have to do toward that end i think it's, it's really cool for me personally to hear that same similarity but in a completely separate way uh so that's super awesome and i i relate to that in a lot of ways <laughs> hashtag relatable <laughs> it's always nice to know that there's somebody out there who is uh you know just as kooky or uh, oh, hundred <laughs> percent. Do I need the tinfoil hats? Is that? Go any... <laughs> <laughs> you keep that tinfoil hat. Let's tap. <laughs> uh, Jelly, what's our next question? So, I mean, w one of the things that we've heard you do is the announcer pack for Paragon. Um, did, so, and you've already mentioned that you played a little bit. What kind of made you want to do that announcer pack? Well the voice that I heard every time, you know, when I was playing that game and I would hear it go off whenever, you know, got a double kill, multi-kill, uh, tower destroyed, that kind of stuff. I mean, I liked the League of Legends one okay, but it wasn't as deep and bassy as it was in that game. So I played the game a lot. I played probably about 800 hours that I sunk into it up before it was shut down. And it was pretty much my favorite game I'd ever played when it came out. Every day I'd come home, I would play six hours if I could. Um, if I had to do any other work or voice work, you know, maybe four hours. And then I would go back to playing it again once I was done. And I wanted to get good. I wanted to understand this game and really dig into how it works and understand things like the terminology, like, you know, ELO, ganking, uh, you know, juking, <laughs> things like all this different terminology. I had no idea when people said, like, there was this whole different world and I could understand why it was a sport and why people wanted to watch it so much. Because then I found myself, when I watched League, finally, after playing Paragon, I understood how the game now worked. So when it came to making the voice pack, I really wanted to just take a shot at doing my take on the Paragon voice and I just called it, at first I called it the MOBA voice, but then because it was the lines taken from Paragon, I just renamed it. It was like, oh, it's the Paragon voice. It's, I'm not going to pretend like it's a MOBA voice. Anybody who's played <laughs> Paragon will know from hearing it, it's the Paragon voice. Yeah, oh so yeah, oh yeah. I got so excited because I'm want. i like, okay, well, I tried recording it and it didn't sound so great uh, just because it wasn't as big and booming and bassy. And I would go back and I would listen to the original lines from the actor who I still don't know who did the lines for the game. I always assumed it was like Michael uh, uh, Richardson or something, uh, but I uh, I was trying to figure it out, and along the way, I started practicing and adding effects until I could create this kind of layering of the voice and add some reverb to make it really sound like what the Paragon voice sounded like. To the point I was happy with it, and then I was like, oh man, there's all these different Paragon games coming out. It's like, maybe if I put it out there, or I try to <laughs> see, because like everybody, I looked at all the different videos of gameplays. Like, has anybody already got a voice for the announcer? And everybody was using the placeholder one that came with the Epic Game assets. Mm -hmm. So it's like, okay, well, obviously nobody wants all of their different games to sound the same. So somebody's going to want it to sound different. So I just kind of popped into chats. I joined a whole bunch of servers and I decided to share it and to see what people thought. Um, and then some people are like, that's pretty cool. You know, we'll send it up and like, see what people think. Other people were like, yeah, that's pretty cool. You know, <laughs> not too many people commented on it. You know, like, I think right now it still has like four comments on it. Like maybe like a hundred views or something. I don't know, maybe less than that. But it was just something that 
it was one more thing I hadn't really ever gotten to do. I tried doing some video game announcer stuff, more like uh, the Unreal Engine voice or Halo. And I liked doing those voices a lot, but never enough to record them because those were always games that had the voice. It was iconic. There wasn't really anything for me to use that voice for. So this was the first time I could create something like this and really say, hey, look, I can do this. Does anybody like it? What do you think? You know, maybe. <laughs> and then if it catches on enough, people would share it. It would go up the line. People would start talking about it because the more and more eyes on it, the more chance that I get to use it for something. So I decided just to just put it on there and be hopeful. But for me, it is probably one of the coolest ideas to be not only a voice. It's just like, oh, yeah, my character got picked and you get to hear my character but to be the voice that every person who plays the game will always hear till the end of time, as long as the <laughs> game exists. That means you're in every game. You're mm -hmm. not going to be like, oh, maybe if my character gets picked, that means you're a part of every game. So that would always be something. If I ever got to do it, I'd be stoked. I'd be stoked to do. And so I remember you coming into the Ethereal Discord and you sharing that video of the, the Paragon announcer um, video. And there was... A considerable amount of time that I'm watching it and it just kind of hit me with that nostalgia feel of Paragon because like you said I mean hundreds and hundreds of hours into that game and then listening it was like is this the guy like I'm not sure <laughs> like and it, but it was just all those feelings of like hearing the those the call outs right and just being like yeah like yeah I just did the thing it, just absolutely incredible um, I'll link it down in the video description yeah, exactly <laughs> awesome <laughs> Your power grows. <laughs> Dude, oh, oh, so man. Your steel rises. <laughs> so I that, said that, that was Smokey, something. too. So hopefully yeah, Smokey I, will I pick up one You don't that. know how many times I practiced that in the car and the bathroom. Because, of course, the bathroom All bathrooms have the greatest, the like, acoustics. It's the greatest mm -hmm. place. <laughs> <laughs> in you got to just turn off the fact that, yeah, maybe there's somebody outside waiting to hear, you know, trying to get to the bathroom and they just hear that inside, wondering what's going on. You know, like, like, what minions oh, sorry, are you talking I, I about? Playing, I was playing my mobile on my phone. I didn't mean to... Especially the minions are spawning. That would be the one that got me. Like... Oh, yeah. That puts that puts something completely different in mind I didn't consider. <laughs> So I do have to ask though, because you said you put you played so much Paragon. Who was like who would you consider your main in Paragon? Who was your character? Severog. Severog. Ooh. I love dark, edgy characters. I love tank characters. And um because of the fact that you get to feel badass and you have that terrifying presence when you are a force to be reckoned with on the battlefield. So I love that idea of just, you know, laughing hysterically while I make people run from me, swinging my big old hammer around trying to take them out. <laughs> and uh, I was really good at it to the point that I almost never missed a subjugate to where I, whenever I was in lane or when I needed to land my subjugate, no matter where the person was getting away, I would just snipe them with it from far away, <laughs> lock them down, get in front of them, beat them under tower, do whatever I had to, to the point that I could lead the team, even though I wasn't a carry I could still lead my team to victory being a Severog. And I loved him. I was just like, there was never enough skins out for him. And I tried all the ones they had. They never really came out with a high tier skin that just really completely changed his character. So I tried playing him in all the different roles I could. I, I, I got so bored at one point, I made him uh, carry support. <laughs> just because, and that worked so well, surprisingly. People were really miffed at the point sometimes when I made him carry support. But all the times I did that ended up really well because I could subjugate and lock people down, beat yeah. them under towards the carry, get them away from the carry. He just worked so well. And he was my character because when he first came out, I mean, my character in the beginning before he was announced was Gideon. And I loved Gideon so much. He was so cool. I love crowd control. I love mages. And um, it, it just kind of sucked that whenever I used his ultimate, he was always just a sitting duck up there and he'd get sniped. <laughs> by a Murdoch from across the map because he's sitting there sucking people under tower. And then, oh, oh God, that sounds bad. <laughs> <laughs> Edit that out. <laughs> but when it came to Severa coming out, I immediately dropped and they said, oh, okay, that's my main. Sorry, you guys can play everything else, but I'm playing Severa. I don't care. I don't care. When I saw his trailer and he does the finger point where he comes up and points it directly at the camera 
And then I was so disappointed. I'm like, I want to know from this story, what does this voice sound like? I couldn't find any evidence of his voice. And I started to picture, I never did like a, a Severog voice pack where I ever tried doing the character, but it'd be really fun to do to try to emulate that character. I think voice. you would be perfect for what I envisioned Severog to sound like. But he didn't really have any lines because he didn't have a voice. So it's hard to, like, unless I wrote my own stuff, you know, it, it'd be hard to try to discern, oh, what should he sound like? Because he didn't have any lines he spoke. Right. But yeah, he was he was my guy whenever I played that game, Severog, always, anytime I could. There was awesome. too much of me hoping to hear that you were a Kalari main, so I could feel justified <laughs> in some way, but it's fine. I, oh, no, no, no. He played a real hero. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> All the jokes, I'm aware, okay? <laughs> the hate that I got from you saying I was a Kalari main in a couple episodes ago was insane. <laughs> The amount of comments that would be like, Jelly, you're a cool dude, but I hate you because you're the worst person in that game. Oh, man. Uh, the, the, only way, the only way people could, opinion could be lowered of you is if you were like, hey, I'm a Wukong maiden. Everybody's like, oh, fuck, fuck that guy. Seriously. I was that low on the poll for everybody. Okay, I get it. Sorry. Wow. Well, I mean, when you play like Severogs or Richters like real men do. Whatever. Oh, yeah. You know you what? Whatever, man. Let me just triple jump out of this conversation, okay? <laughs> Richter was a fun one, too. That one uh, couldn't help myself every time. You know, I had to rope somebody and say, get over here! Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> every Richter main ever. I say it as yeah. well, just not as well. <laughs> <laughs> so, is um, I've, I've mentioned your YouTube. Is there anywhere else we can hear your work? You said that you have some stuff that currently isn't published, but will be coming yeah. out soon and you you mentioned your your mods where, where are some other places people can hear you well let's see i would say you could definitely find me over on my youtube channel or my soundcloud um i'm also going to be on a uh podcast it's a role-playing podcast over at twitch.tv slash arcane recovery show and they're Instagram is also at arcane underscore recovery on Instagram and Twitter. And so it is a community that's been kind of led to create this D and D group where everybody comes together and creates their own kind of like story collectively where everybody contributes and can come back to it. And then people who play in it can eventually DM and grow from there. Uh, I'm also getting to, voice in some upcoming kind of projects like there's an animation a legend of zelda animation that's coming out called uh legend of zelda majora's mask lost in time and that's by the innervation brothers they're kind of creating this short in the unreal engine that's really looks really really nice and has legend of zelda characters in it i'm playing the skeletons in it that kind of like you know are the main antagonists in this animation that's coming out that's so awesome. That's something that's kind of in the pipeline to a short film that will hopefully be published soon. I've done two films already um, by Stephen Hancock and Evan Royalty over at Retro Digital. Uh, the SCP Dollhouse short film and the SCP Overlord. Uh, I played two different characters in each of those films. Those were pretty big hits. They, uh, they won awards. So those were really fun to work for. Um, as far as video games right now, I have only really done that still is published and exists on Steam because some that I voiced for have been taken down since kind of smaller indie games. The one that is still up is Pop-Up Dungeon in that I play some Sergeant Grunt Marines, like, you know, a Sergeant and some Grunt Marines that kind of like run around that you can place on the board in this kind of turn-based RPG game, as well as I'm a druid that uh, can turn into different forms like bees and stuff. I'm an old man druid who always like takes these different forms and can <laughs> interact and attack enemies. So they they wanted me to kind of go for that voice. And the first voice I immediately picked when I wanted to come up with this old silly man druid voice. I'm like, uh, Zillion. I'm gonna do Zillion. <laughs> I'm gonna do that voice and just completely go for that. <laughs> um, so uh, until the embargoes have lifted. I can't announce the other projects that are coming out, game-related projects, um, because there's a bunch right now that I've done since early 2020 that now are going to take about a year or two before they finally come out. And 
as of now, I can't speak on them, but when I get the chance, I'd love to post and tell everybody about it over at my Twitter at Daniel Hodge VA or on my Facebook at Daniel Hodge Voice Actor. And of course, my YouTube, which is just YouTube user slash DN Hodge. That is where I post anything that I can as far as impressions or updates. I try to release something every once in a while. I'm not very, very active on it where I'm posting like every week. But whenever something strikes my fancy that I want to post on there. So hopefully you'll be able to catch me over on those live streams over at the Arcane Recovery Podcast. And when I'm not there, you can, of course, find me. I'll, I'll be hanging out when I can in the Ethereal Discord or in any of the other kind of uh, MOBA discords that I frequent just to kind of talk to people and stay linked to the community because I want to see, especially Ethereal, how it grows and evolves in the future now that I get to do things like the spotlights for it and kind of get to see how you guys react every time one comes out. It's always fun to go and check YouTube and see what you guys are saying about it and how excited you're getting and what you're uh, picking apart whenever you see something come on screen <laughs> and one of the looks and stuff. Some of the things that... I've definitely, uh, I've, I've definitely got to say, looks so cool. When they finally do come out and the game becomes playable, I really want to explore the map, just run around in it in circles oh, for yeah. a while and see, you know, appreciate the design and the aesthetics that they've put into it all this time. Because obviously the game's probably been worked on a lot longer than we've even known about it. Mm. A long time, yeah. Yeah. Most definitely, yeah. What we got next, Jelly? So if there was one myth in Ethereal that we've seen so far that you would want to voice, which one would it be? Oh, that's that's the tough one. That's always the tough question. If I had to pick, if I had to pick, it would probably be Aaron or Grognark, okay. I would have to say. And both are such cool in design. Uh, I love playing the big boobing monster guy or uh, the dark conniving demon evil guy. So th their their designs are just so cool. And of course the Berserker and the Archmage archetypes being so cool. Um, I wanted to see what I could do if I played something like Aeron and just was able to like charge through and break those barriers and kind of like sneak up on people and creep them out a little bit. The voice, <laughs> the voice is already <laughs> perfect in my mind. I, I love the way that his voice sounds. I don't know if I could do it better. I, I, I don't think I could do it better than what, how he sounds because it sounds so cool. But if it was if it was my pick and I got to look at the list of names and their designs and see the artwork for each of them, those two would be at my top one because I would love to be the big booming rock like guy, you know, or that or, or Aaron. Just just so cool and unique and different from the other designs that we got in Paragon you know, and got yeah. the experience. I love the more <laughs> animalistic, exaggerated features that you get that really makes the character look like they're from another planet or another world than all the other characters came from. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Who would you who would you play? Who would you want to play, do you think? Same Playing one? Wise, yeah, I mean, I would still probably play... Uh, I, I love Noxus. She looks really cool. Uh, and uh, I really want to play Talos as well. Both of those real, look really fun, Noxus and Talos. Um, in I guess because of my time playing in Paragon, I'm usually uh, tank support at heart. So I always love to do jungler stuff if I can as well. Sevrog was so good at jungling. So I guess um, depending on who's the jungler, because I don't know very much about who's the jungler right now. I think uh, is Grognar kind of top lane jungler? I would think. We, we think so. Really knows. We think Malaya yeah. could be using the jungle. We think Aran could be using the jungle. It's going to be, we know, yeah. We Next week, we got, we'll cool. get Talos's kit. So, in theory, we'll be able to tell better then as well if Talos could jungle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I would yeah. I would love to do something like that. Playing one of those guys and uh, playing off lane or top lane and just hanging out, you know, soloing, taking on two people at once with a big beefy guy who's holding everybody back and then also being the guy who gets to come in and hit with cc do any type of cool you know swing of the battle you know from getting there and positioning themselves i love positioning myself between me and the squishies and just keeping them yeah uh, keeping the enemy sustained so i think based on their looks the designs i would love to play something like that um i just love the way talos looks how big he is with his big weapon and um he looks like he could do a lot of damage that would really hurt 
So <laughs> yeah. if I got if I got a chance, first thing I'm probably going to play is I'm going to try out Aaron, then probably Grognark, then probably Talos, and then Noxus in that order because they all look so interesting to me. I love their designs. Right on. Yeah, that's awesome. Mm-hmm. And do you have any advice for people that want to get into voice acting? We've kind of talked about it briefly with the other voice actors, and I would love to hear what you have to say toward that end. The best advice I can get for anyone looking to get into it is to understand the three pillars of what you'll need to be a voice actor to succeed. And that is talent, availability, and money. The first two will get you the third, unless, I mean you're willing to put what you make back into your work and improve your sound, you're not gonna really be able to compete. So staying motivated and finding projects that interest you, that you want to voice for, not stuff that makes the most money, but projects that make you want to get up and get in front of the microphone again, to try and record that character or do that narration, things that just are fun, because that's ultimately the only way you're ever going to stay in this as a job or try to make money off of it or be successful just having fun as a hobby is if you want to do it. So make sure anything you do is something you want to do every day when you get back into it. Um, and you'll do fine if that's the case. Worst thing that is that can happen is getting burnout. I've had it before happen to me where I've gotten burnout and I've auditioned for so many things. I didn't get a lot of hits. Um, and the very like common thing that I hear in the industry is like, oh, if you're not willing to put in 100 auditions a day, don't bother being a voice actor. And that I think is a little bit overblown because I usually find I get a lot more work if I just do like 20, 25 and I still get a lot of hits and a lot of success. But casting that net as wide as possible to make sure that you are getting a sustainable income to make this a career instead of just a hobby. You really have to make sure that you're trying every day when you get up is just putting in those auditions, finding projects, doing research, knocking on doors to the point that once you've gotten so many years into the business and you have an agent and you have somebody looking out for you when you go to audition for projects, you don't have to worry about trying so hard anymore because everybody wants you to be there. And Mm. that's what I experienced was in the beginning, fortunately, I didn't really have to knock on too many doors because in the communities I was a part of, the stuff they saw and the word of mouth spread like crazy. And I ended up getting a lot of messages of a lot of people in every place I went asking me to be in their things to the point that I had to start turning people down and say, no, I can only do this. I can only do that. And it's, it's a lot harder to say yes when you're not being compensated, when you're doing it for fun, because any time that you are accepting work that is unpaid, that you do as a passion project, you are taking away from time that you, could be doing professional work and a furthering your career. So I still love to try to stay involved with community things like that, like mods or animations or videos, but I'm a lot more upfront now about asking for money now that I have a professional recording set up and I can feel better about charging people for the quality that I produce and what I can provide as an actor. I don't have to feel self-conscious about whether I'm good or not anymore. And the actors that I talked to now, you know, they hear my work and they don't they don't talk to me in a condescending way about oh, like, oh, you really need to do this or that. They're mostly they just see me as a business companion to somebody else in the industry that they've met. And it's nice to be treated that way by other professional actors because you feel like, oh, I want to get your autograph. I want to get approval by you that I could be an actor. People who wait in line at conventions for hours on end to get a signature just to talk for an actor for a couple minutes and I realized I didn't really need to do that anymore once I stopped being a fan and started being an actor because then it was just them doing the same thing I do every day. The mutual respect was there. You didn't have to try to prove yourself to anybody. So what you want to do as far as maybe exercises is you want to do kind of like a rep system where you hold your breath in, kind of go and then breathe out slowly. And that kind of can expand your lungs a bit and allow you to kind of take on longer sentences. And if you want to make sure you don't have any mouth noise, you do kind of uh, exercise where you spell out the vowels, you know, with your mouth, but you really exaggerate the facial features and stretch that out. That allows you to really get rid of the tenseness in your face 
and pronounce words correctly, and then also get rid of any mouth noise that you may have. So if people want to really succeed, they need to practice, they need to watch their diet, cut things out like dairy, sugar, you know, at least a day before, as well as the day of recording to make sure it doesn't impact your performance and make sure during that 90% that you're in front of the mic, you know, that you are making sure to hit all of those notes, hitting every line the way that you want to and be comfortable doing so where you're not straining yourself too much and you're showing people that I know what I'm doing and you don't have to be handheld through the whole time. And that will all come with practice and time. I've only gotten to this point because I've done all this for nine years, 10 years now. And I've gotten a lot of practice of just trial and error, figuring it out, teaching myself and learning about this industry through YouTube videos that I look up. That's awesome. I'm definitely going to do that breathing thing because I have trouble with that, making it through a full sentence without having to... <laughs> <laughs> you think about it your lungs are just big kind of elastic bags that are in there that mm -hmm. as soon as you bring in that air it kind of fills up and then your lungs expand and they're like okay now i need to take this shape and i can start holding in more oxygen i've woken up you know it's like stretching in the morning so getting yourself ready for any acting work or even singing work you need to make sure that you have the bag capacity for what <laughs> you're about to do and if you're doing it you know like really really small uh, like you know lines or breaths and stuff like that it's not such a big deal but when you have to do something like narration work it can take a lot out of you and you can end up making it sound really unnatural when you have to get in front of like what i do is first thing when i'm going to go do the narration work for a spotlight do those exercises because there can be not a lot of you know uh not a lot of breaks in some of the lines that you read you have to get them you have to get them through in the right breath and the right pacing. Otherwise, it sounds like you're literally running out of breath by the end of the line. And you're like, oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> it's like just trying to say this is such a mouthful. Right on. Uh, Jelly, do you have any more questions for Dan before we cl start closing things out? I think that's everything I got. All right. Uh, that, uh, that's going to about wrap it up. Let's uh, let's move on to plugs. Uh, Dan, you, are, you listened to a bunch of stuff, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to write all that down. I'm going to link everything down below but anything else you want you wanted to plug um nothing at the moment uh just once again uh going on to twitch uh, uh tv slash uh, arcane recovery and going to their uh twitter or instagram if you could at arcane underscore recovery those guys really talented always looking for more people to join the community and watch our podcast um as far as my work Everything that you'll see from me, you'll probably get to hear through Ethereal um, as that's relating to all of this as it comes out. Um, hopefully there'll be videos about on that. And of course, I'll be happy to talk about it when things, you know, that come out get revealed and we all get to talk about it together. But as of right now, nothing, nothing major to plug just yet. All right. Yeah, I'll, I'll definitely have that, that Twitch and the Instagram and everything linked in the video description below if you guys want to easily check that out. Jelly, you got anything to plug this week? More videos. Like usual, uh, we Mo both video. Mangoose and I did uh, a breakdown on the Malaya Spotlight. If you haven't seen that, so definitely go check those out. Uh, like Mangoose said, maybe that he's more on the comedy side, and I'm more of the like, <laughs> look the little teeny pixel in the corner. We see the thing, right? But <laughs> so depending on what you want to see, that's that's <laughs> the disparity, maybe. But yeah, more videos. That's about it for me. What about you, Mangoose? Ethereum GG Jelly's website, all about Ethereal. Check it out. We're having updates on that all the time. So definitely go check that out. Yep. And uh, I think that's going to wrap it up for this week, folks. Uh, this was a really enjoyable episode for, um, this is one of the ones that I'm going to enjoy editing. Like, <laughs> like just sitting down, going through it, listening to everything all over again. And I hope you guys enjoyed it. And I hope you guys, guys all join us as we enter the ether. Mangoo!